There we go. Alrighty. Evening, 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 everybody. Some of you guys know me, some of you don't. This is a, I'm going to title baitfish pattern. It's nothing fancy with CDC or anything like that, but it's a pretty versatile little pattern. You can use it for trout, especially coming up now, winter. Uh, I know the guys like to fish places like St. Bernard, and it's a very good deep water pattern, early morning pattern, late evening pattern in the close to the banks and things like that. If you want, you can also tie it bigger if you like. It's a good largey fly as well. It's a general all-round pattern. Even if you want to tie it for the salt, you can change the colors. I'm just going to go with the basic olive tonight, but I mean, you can you can really mix the colors up a lot and do what you want with it. All righty. So yeah, hooks. Um, anything with a bit of a biggish gape. These are the, these are gummers. Um, they work pretty well. But anything with a nice long long shank, big gape is going to work pretty well. Good size. Uh, any are oh, sixes, eights, good size, eh? You can go as small as you want, as daring as you want, but uh, yeah, six, eight, general good size. Alrighty. So yeah, just dressing the hook. If you want, you can add a little bit of lead, depending on how you're fishing it. Some guys fish it on a floater, works nice, you get a good action out of Zonka, which is nice, so add a little bit of lead. Uh, just closer to the front, you're going to sort of get that diving action. You don't want another full shank, so yeah. Alrighty, then just strap it down a little bit. Yeah, then you can pretty much come back to your, your point of your hook where the barb is. That's a general good all-round section. And then uh, the main key to this is the zonka. Uh, this is barred zonka. You can get it on full skins uh, or you can buy it in packets. This is really nice stuff. So it's good all round stuff. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel back some of the, the hair. You don't want them too long. Um, so as you can see there, I've pulled back the hair. Just trying to find a gap there in the middle so where I can put the thread and tie it down. And I'm, I'm going to tie it down there where the the bob is stick one down and another one if you want to go more you can uh, I stick with two it's it pretty much fastens if you can put it nice and tight all right so I've tied that down now and then the fanciest thing ever is one of these Petajan tools they're pretty cool not everyone's got one but uh, if you can make a dubbing loop it works the same way so Here's what's really nice is if you want to, this is going to be the stomach of the bait fish. So now you can you can pretty much mix it up as much as you want. You can put olive in there, you can put a little bit of uh, white in there or pearl. It's really you can go wild with it, which is nice. So depending on what you want to imitate. So yeah, I'm using the big uh, the big Petajan uh, clip. Just stick some down. You can always, you don't have to make it too thick. Just lift it up so we can have I'll do that. There you go. If you can see, there is quite a lot in it. Doesn't, it's not really a lot, but in the camera it looks like a lot. You can always add more if you want. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Charlie. Stick it down. Grab it with a clamp. If you can see, I'll just cut it. Could, could you see? Oh, there it's in the clamp. And just cut the bottom off. No, not right against the clip. No, no, you want to keep, you've got to grab the that little piece that's sticking out you've got to grab that when you split your thread so you don't want to cut it right up against the clamp and then the tricky part if you is to split your thread what's that uh yeah this is like a crystal dub eh? it's just an olive crystal yeah it's like that that slf blend it's a really nice dub. got a bit of flash in it which is nice so yeah then just split the thread yeah, or a dubbing loop, yes. But I find splitting the threads easier 
I'm too lazy to do dubbing lips. <laughs> Alright, then you can use the your tool, just slip it in, clamp it down, and then yeah, then you gotta spin it. Obviously until you see it start twisting up. If you are tying a lot more in at once, if you're making bigger patterns, a bigger uh, a dubbing loop is much more preferable. If you're using little bits like that, tying on the sixes and stuff, it, uh, it's a lot easier to do with it. Yeah, then just pull it up and it'll spin nicely, as you can see. Yeah, and then you can start wrapping it from the back. Just pull the fibers back. Obviously, it's all bushy, so yeah, just pull the fibers back as, you, as you're twisting. You can make, depending on how thick you want the stomach, if you want it big, if you want it thin, that's up to you. You can wind it, but just keep pulling the fibers back. And then you can come to the front. I've stopped pretty much, I don't know, that's like an eighth of the way, I suppose, from the hook eye. And then the next is to pull your zonker strip back over the top. The trick is don't, don't tie in all the, try and pull the zonker back. It's, it's hard to explain. <laughs> um, you don't want to tie zonker down when, you, when you're finishing off. You want to tie it onto the skin of the zonker, so pull away that little bit that you... Alright, so just pull some air. Cool, and you can tie it. Just make two or three wraps, just so you know it's nice and tight. You can trim the zonker. Yeah, and then you can just finish it off with a nice little head. Alrighty, then we'll finish it. Simple as that. That's as easy as it is. I'm just going to stick some eyes on. What you can do now is just tease the dubbing out. Mark, we feed you 500 down for this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then you can tease it out and then just get some. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't just move that thing. Huh? Just take some eyes. Sorry, I've just turned it because I want to stick the. Yeah, just get some super glue or something like that to stick your eyes on. What I find is if you take uh, like zapper gel or super glue gel, it's a lot easier to work with than, than super glue. Because most of the time you stick some super glue on your hand, it ends up sticking the eye to your fingers and plays and things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a neat trick for that, believe it or not. I just want to tell you about a new trick about this. You get a match. At the end of the match, you put some pricks. On the end of the match, you put some pricks. In one match, you put your eye. Your eye, okay. So you're not gluing anything. I know a lot of guys like to use their, um, their bodkins as well to use it. I like to just stick a little bit on. You can stick the eye quite far forward. Don't stick it too too far back. And just push it on. And that's it. Eh? <laughs> nice and easy, nothing fancy, but uh, it works. I can. Um, it's very good for trout. It works awesome for largies. We get a lot of small mouths on this fly, fishing for largies as well. It's 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 a deadly fly. As I said, this is a small one. This is a six. 
uh, for the trout, but if you want to go up to fours and twos for largies, it's it's a winner. What kind of eyes do you got? What's that? What kind of eyes? Uh, these are these are these are just those fishing eyes, uh, those frantic eyes. They're quite a cool little eye. It's sort of a dome-shaped eye. They're really nice. You can use flat stick-ons as well, but these ones look a little bit more real. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How much of that jigging motion do you really want? I mean, obviously it attracts it, but when a fish swims naturally, it swims straight. It doesn't dip like that. So I know you put a little bit like the right spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much, like, when would you put a lot more? I mean, obviously it's not going to be natural. I think it's it's so much of an attraction, really. I mean, it's not that you're trying to imitate the bait fish to the ideal, but you, you're trying to get to induce that take. Eh? So I think that, quite honestly, the more the more movement you can get in that fly, the more that fish is going to react to the to the movement. Eh? Definitely. The truth is, less is more, less lead. I think it's a misnomer. I know when I started fishing, it was always a case of the bigger and the heavier. Tom said to me, he says, That's was also depending on what depths you're fishing and things like that, you know. If you want to be down the bottom and so things I mean, like that, you're obviously going to... Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. But we'll, obviously, I mean, you know, we, we're tying a lot with, with dumbbell eyes and stuff, four largies, and you know, obviously because of the deer here, and you, you want a lot more movement out of that, so... You see that that's for me that's the thing like like mark i don't know as you said his movement is not i don't know well i wasn't listening that well but i like a lot of movement <laughs> performance review <laughs> but we, we obviously I, I focus a lot more on this movement because it's very difficult to get this movement so for me, yeah, this is very important. Um, we are, we, I've developed a couple of flies now that are actually getting this movement. I know that that Peter Jean little, that cup, that works, but we, I've developed a fly now that's swimming like this. It's in the safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All happy? Right.